Hi, my name is Matthew Hernandez, and this is the third lab for Physics 2212, going over the topic of magnetic field of a bar magnet. So the objective of this lab is through the using of a digital magnometer, we're actually able to create a computational model of the magnetic field that emits from a bar magnet. Um, not only this, but we're actually able to calculate the magnetic dipole moment that comes from a bar magnet. So principles and equations, magnets are very important to be knowing about in this lab. Um, it's south to north, and the dipole moment it heads in that direction, and south is considered negative, and north is considered positive. Apart from that, you can treat it just like a, a regular dipole. Um, now, the magnetic field, we're going to be looking at the on-axis points and off-axis. We just need to know that the on-axis is going to be in the direction of the magnetic dipole moment, and when it's off-axis, it's going to be the opposite direction as well as half of the on axis magnetic field. Now the procedure in part one, we're gonna download the app um, in order to collect data and then we're gonna lay the ruler in east to west is just important um, to try to have the effects of Earth's magnetic field not affect it as much. And then we're gonna move the phone up and down until the absolute X is at its greatest, absolute Y is at its lowest, and then put a piece of tape there, and then we rotate the phone 90 degrees, and we do the exact same thing, only set the absolute Y is at its greatest, and absolute X is at its lowest, and then we mark a piece of tape, and X marks the spot, that's where the magnetic magnometer chip is located in your phone. And then part two is that we're gonna be taking this new given point, and now we know where the chip is at, and we're going to be moving the phone in some direction in the X component from the phone until the X component reads 20 UT, 70, 120, 170, 220, and collect this distance so we can find a relationship. And then finally, we're going to be taking this phone and then we're going to be getting some distance from the magnet until the net magnetic field reads 100. And then we calculate this distance from the meter and then we go in the Y direction from this exact distance and then we get the readings from there as well for the x y and z components of the magnetic field that comes from this magnet and then when we were collecting data for the on axis positions this is kind of what we got to where we actually did l and a b of x and l and of r um, for our x and y components of this graph and this will be important in further slides and then this is the off axis where we were also able to calculate the X, Y, and Z magnetic field components as well as the Y magnetic field component coming from the Earth. And we'll use this as a way to subtract from the overall Y component to get the true um, magnetic field in the Y component of just a magnet. Now the analysis and calculations. So B on axis can also be rewritten as KR to the power of N. And then this also can be rewritten as ln of v of x is equal to ln of k plus n ln and r. Now, the reason why the graph was in ln of v of x and ln of r is because we can rework this to where we can just isolate ln of k as a y-intercept, and we can find n, which is actually the slope of the graph, which we got it to be negative 2.93, so we can sum it around negative 3. And this is important because when calculating the magnetic field dipole moment, we were actually able to... Um, cancel out a lot of things and just allow ourselves to get the magnetic field dipole moment. Now the computational code. So this right here, we're just creating a function to do the magnitude of the magnetic moment, um, constants as well. And then a lot of the rest of this code is basically creating uh, vectors and arrows and the size of them in order to show for the computational model. And this is just the same thing, computational model um, showing the arrows um, throughout the entire experiment that we've been collecting data show, um, for, and that way we can show what we're looking at. Now this is exactly what we're doing. So we can see um, some electric fields in the perpendicular um, positions as well as the on-axis positions, and an additional position that isn't either, and we can kind of see what it's looking like. So we can see that the experimental net magnetic field that we got from our put into Excel spreadsheets and everything is actually greater than that of the comput computational net magnetic field and the X and Y components for this instance. And then the reflection questions, the what if we hadn't orientated our experiment to like basically the ruler a meter stick in east and west? Well, the issue is that if we put it anywhere else, we would be dealing with some issues with the earth magnetic field and so because of this it would actually mess with some of our calculations and the x components and the y components and z components 
of our magnetic field. And then finally, it's if we were to stick two magnets together and put it at the end of the ruler, our actually magnetic field would be twice that of the magnetic field that was coming from the singular uh, magnet. And overall, our values would just be doubled. So this is it.